Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Wiley. I'm here. In today's Fuji Friday, I really don't have any news to cover, so I'm going to be talking about digital image stabilization and also IBIS. These are two features that I've talked a lot about because they're really prominent in the last few cameras that we've seen from Fuji Films, and the X-T4 of course has that built-in IBIS, which I'm really looking forward to testing. My camera still hasn't shipped yet, but it should be shipping next week, so everybody who's enjoying it over in Europe, definitely let me know know what you think in the comments below but there's already been feedback trickling in and there's a couple of interesting things to talk about I'm just going to link something down here which is uh, one of Albert's videos which is about a minute long and it shows that the IBIS isn't working as well as we would like for video and this is something that we see very often in which the developers at Fuji Films they definitely have specifications that they code for but a lot of times they don't really account for all of the different ways that we can actually use the camera especially in video especially when we're doing handheld and in that video it shows one of the limitations now this is isn't a bad thing this is just something that they're just going to have to cover and hopefully they give us the options like in the Fujifilm's menu system to be able to adjust IBIS kind of like how they do for optical image stabilization and many of the other settings inside the camera we definitely need a way to be able to configure ibis to kind of work the way we want to and they need to really extend that in the menu systems to have many different ways to do that now a lot of people already say the fuji films menu system isn't really all that great and it's kind of complicated but that's kind of the nature of the beast anytime you have a camera system that's really complex with a lot of ways that you can adjust it you're going to end up with a really complex menu system but we really do need those options to be able to adjust IBIS to the way that we want to use it because it's going to be different on the photography side and it's going to be different on the video side. On the video side, especially if we're hand holding it, we're definitely looking for smoothness. We definitely want the sensor to continue to move when we pan. So these are things that, you know, we really do want to fine tune ourselves. Now on the photography side, we do have panning. That is an issue as well, but we also have people that are just hand holding who wants to take that static shot. So hopefully Hopefully Fuji Films will continue to work with the IBIS system and also put it into the menu systems so that we can actually fine tune it ourselves. Now the other type of stabilization that we've been talking about is digital image stabilization which is very prominent on the X-T200 and I've been trying it out with a lot of different lenses just to see if there's any type of consistency and what I'm seeing is that there definitely is inconsistencies between lenses and that's something to be expected. You know, we keep on comparing it to the action cam, which is really great at digital image stabilization. But one thing that we're kind of not giving the action cam credit for is that they only have one lens that they need to work with. They have a fixed lens. So that means that developers can really fine tune that to one specific lens. Whereas when we're talking about cameras like ours, since it's interchangeable and we can put any number of lenses on there, it's going to be significantly more difficult to have consistencies across all of the lenses. And what I'm noticing in general is that the wider you go, the more inconsistent, the more warpy it becomes. Uh, for anybody who's actually trying digital image stabilization and using it quite a lot, definitely write your comments on what you think about digital image stabilization because I would love to know. For my part, it's usually a little bit too inconsistent to where I would want to use it. If it's a vlogging thing where I'm behind the camera and I'm not using a wide angle lens, it's usually not all that bad. But if I'm actually vlogging by myself and I'm holding it in front of myself, I usually have digital image stabilization off because the image just gets a little bit too warpy for my taste and I'd rather just use optical image stabilization or IBIS if I have it in that camera because it just generally turns out a lot better. And what I really should be doing in those type of logging moments is trying to move a whole lot less, but it's something that's kind of ingrained in me to keep moving for some reason. I don't know why, but getting back on topic, this is definitely a technology that's going to take a little bit more time to figure out. It's just been very inconsistent for me, but it is a really cool technology and I'm really hoping that they figure it out because if they can there's definitely going to be a lot of different things that they can do with it but this is the reason why we have ibis and why ibis is so important because being able to physically move that lens seems to be the technology that's working the best besides optical image stabilization now if i had to rank the three together i would say that i would still prefer to have lens optical image stabilization first 
and then IBIS and then digital image stabilization as more of a backup, kind of the last thing that I will try if I really needed it. I still really like to have optically stabilized lenses, but one of the things about Fuji Films is that they have some really amazing prime lenses and almost all of them do not have optical image stabilization. I think the only one that does have OIS is the 80 millimeter macro, which is a terrific lens, but you're talking about a very expensive lens. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of trade-offs with some of these compact primes. So going into the future, we have these three technologies kind of competing for development time. And it's going to be very interesting to see how Fuji Films is going to approach this. Are they going to continue to build prime lenses without OIS? Are they going to make IBIS a default standard for all of their camera bodies? I think for a camera the size of an X-T30 or the next generation an X-T40, it might be a little difficult because that's a small camera body right there. I'm actually filming on the X-T30 right now. It's a great camera, but they're probably going to have to increase the size of it just like they did the X-T3 if they they want to fit IBIS in there. Is that a compromise that they're willing to do? And if they do fit IBIS in there, is it going to increase it over that thousand dollar mark, which is a really important mark to kind of keep cameras below, especially for a really high spec entry level camera like the X-T30 or the future X-T40. Now, when it comes to digital image stabilization, it really comes down to consistency for me. Can they really get digital image stabilization consistent across all of the Fujifilm lenses? And if they can do that, is it going to be useful enough? Now, I personally think because it is technology they will eventually figure it out it might take an entire new lineup of lenses to figure it out and new technology in the camera body but i think they will eventually figure it out along with all the other camera manufacturers but i really do think that it really hasn't hit generation one yet for these larger sensors for digital image stabilization we're really still trying to get to a good benchmark for that and hopefully within the next few generation of cameras we'll really get a camera with good digital image stabilization across the entire Fujifilm's lineup but again that remains to be seen but that's kind of my thoughts on it. These three technologies are definitely very cool. They're definitely gonna define the future of Fuji Films and what they're gonna be able to do for both photography and video. And hopefully they'll continue to progress very quickly like they have been in their last few camera bodies. But those are my thoughts. Definitely leave your comments below on what you think of the three technologies and where it thinks it's going. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to talk to you about that. That's all I have this week. I hope you're safe. I hope you have a good weekend and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.